Bereshit bara Elohim. This is so common. Okay, even people who know hardly anything know this. Perhaps many of you know it in Hebrew. Even those of you who don't know Hebrew may be familiar with these words. Bereshit bara Elohim. Okay, as we learned before, it's interesting that, that the Torah begins with Bet and not with Aleph. But I want to focus on something else here. What does this, what does this phrase mean? Notice I, did, I didn't even put the whole verse. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. We're leaving heaven and earth aside for now. Okay, just focusing on the first three words of the Torah. Bereshit bara Elohim. That means, of course, in the beginning, God created. But what does the Hebrew actually say? Bereshit, in the beginning... Bara created Elohim, God. That's how the Zohar reads the verse. In the beginning, it created God. That's startling. That is the Zohar's commentary on the first pasuk of the entire Torah. Right there, you see why the Zohar was hidden. Right there, you understand what all those restrictions about studying Kabbalah. How can the Zohar say that the Torah begins by saying that God was created? That sounds crazy. That sounds heretical. In the beginning, God created. No, the Zohar says, in the beginning, something created God. Now, this isn't atheism. This isn't a put down of God. This is saying there's something greater about God than, than what we call God. So who is the subject of Bereshit bara Elohim? It's not Elohim. Elohim is the object. Now, of course, in Hebrew, the object can come after the verb. Certainly, the simple meaning of this verse is, in the beginning, Elohim created. There's no doubt. But the Zohar says, no, let's read it hyper-literally. I would call this hyper-literalism. The Zohar says, you want to read the Torah literally? Look at it really literally. In the beginning, it created Elohim. So who is the subject? The subject is the unnameable, ayin or ein sof. The God, what the great one mystic is called, the God beyond God. So, and Soph is certainly the subject, but Elohim, I think this is the Zohar's way of saying what we think of as God, that's a very puny understanding of God. So the Zohar is constantly challenging human theological systems, human theological beliefs.